Hi, ma'am. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, I want this. Go sit in like that. Sit properly. Like a lady. Your legs together. Come on, mom. What's the matter? There's no other people than us here. Besides, I already wear long pants. Oh my god, I was just so bored with all the people talking to me. Hey, Tia, you should sit like this. You should wear dresses. You know what? This feminine ethic is actually social construction. And now, the fashion is also evolving. I understand all that. But you know, you should not let the westernization sink in your mind. We have a culture to respect. Our traditions, my love. Oh my god, whatever. I want to watch television. Good morning and welcome to Fox News. My name is Margaret. Up first, we have an update relating to the recent announcements made by fossil fuels company Shell about their plans to build a new 500 hectares oil field in Nigeria. This has unleashed massive protests and inconveniences for the communities that currently live there, but also rejection from diverse social movements. First, let's recap the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed partners and press, it is with great pleasure that I announce our agreement with the Minister of Petroleum Resources, Nigeria. Our investment of over $40 billion signifies our unyielding commitment to expansion and prosperity. Uh, what about the Niger Delta community that are currently living in those areas who will be affected the most by your project? Ah, the communities. Well, we are providing an opportunity that they cannot refuse. More than 1,000 jobs. Do you know what I mean? Don't be ungrateful. This is a social responsibility project that has never been implemented anywhere before. You see, just enough to keep them tethered and hopefully productive. Of course, they will have to prove their worth through backbreaking work. But are you also aware that some of the reserve area for your oil plant is actually part of protected forests? What a stupid question. Listen, the government of Nigeria will handle it. They have their ways. Our concern is growth, expansion, and most importantly, profit. Environmental concerns? Well, that's a matter for Greta and her cute little friends. We do business here. Don't, we don't play a game. Our duty is to ensure our investors are content and that we progress regardless of what stands in our way. For detailed information about the protest, we have our foreign correspondent Susan reporting from The Hague. We hear there are people blocking the streets and affecting the movement of citizens. Susan, please tell us more about the situation there. Good morning, everyone. I'm Susan. I'm here outside of Shell's offices in The Hague, where hundreds of vandals are gathering to protest against a development project that this company is about to begin in the Niger Delta. So they say they are part of the Nigerian diaspora here in the Netherlands, and they claim that the environment is going to be damaged or some families are going to be displaced. Honestly, I just believe it's another proof of how activists just always reject development. But let's hear what they have to say. Good morning. What are you doing here? We are here to protest against the injustice Shell is about to commit. Why are you environmental activists always against development and progress? Well, this environmental injustice must stop. Our rivers have become contaminated. Getting clean water for the people of the Niger Delta has become difficult. Our lands have become barren due to oil spillage. The air has become polluted. The air has become polluted. Our people are dying and this must stop. Oh, what an exaggeration. Are you aware that this project will create 1,000 jobs for the people of the Niger Delta? How can you just reject this huge opportunity because some fishes will be sick? But at what cost? Don't you understand that our human actions keeps affecting the planet? These oil companies and in the Niger, these oil companies in the Niger Delta are creating chaos in our environment with their gas emissions. And if time is not taken, the planetary boundaries will be crossed. The planetary boundaries will be crossed, and the Holocene will become affected. The holo what? Anyway, so according to your speech. What happens? What are the consequences of this? 
Well, if this happens, we will reach an irreversible tipping point where we will begin to experience a volatile, a volatile climate and extreme drought. As it, as it is, marine fisheries are already suffering due to oil spillage and discharge of oil waste in the water bodies. Now, if we keep taking from the earth, what will be left of it? Oh, so romantic and so exaggerating. Wait, I'm hearing back from studio. Hi, Susan. I've been informed there's also feminists protesting here. Can you report any further on this? Yes, Margaret. Actually, the feminists are here. What a surprise. I just see them in every protest, so apparently they don't have jobs or children to take care of. Hello, good morning. Can you explain for news viewers what are feminists doing here? Well, contrary to people who believe, Feminists do, do have jobs and responsibilities, but we are like superheroes of activism, multitasking for justice. Now, about Shell's project. Feminism, according to Nancy Fraser, is like seasoning. It goes well with everything, especially when fighting against the ills of capitalism. I still really don't get what feminism has to do with a development project. Think of Shell's project as a bad reality show. Feminism in this context is the sassy commentator exposing the behind the scenes drama and chaos of capitalism and its impact on gender. We are here to cancel the show and demand for a better script for the future. Gender and capitalism, how is that related? It's like trying to separate peanut butter and jelly. They just belong together. Imagine the environment as the sandwich and gender issues as the delightful combination of peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly. We are here to make sure the whole sandwich is delicious just for everyone, not just for a selected few. Sandwich, peanut butter, now I'm getting lost. Please, please try to explain me this. Safeguarding the planet requires building an alternative to hege hegemonic capitalism. As Nancy Fraser said, we need to stop business as usual. Okay, I'm hearing back from studio. Yes, Margaret? Hi, Susan. Um, enough of her. Can we, is there someone standing next to her? Can we, can we go to her? Yes, well, actually, I'm seeing a sign that is saying something about the growth. So let's see what this nonsense about now. Hello, um, you are uh, claiming the growth. What, what is this? The first step is that we want the Niger Delta to be able to be free to organize her resources with the aim of meeting human needs as opposed to organizing her resources to service the global north, the growth of the global north countries like yours. But Shell is only helping you to grow Nigeria's GDP. How can you be against that? Really? You need to change your thinking. We can actually grow our economy in non extractive ways and besides GDP is not the only measure of human well-being. Our demand is simple. Rich countries have to reduce the use of our natural resources and abandon their continued push for excessive growth which comes as a cost for our environment. Thank you. Wow dear viewers, so these people basically want to destroy the economy. Not only they are here broke in the street but they also reject external investors go to Nigeria to help them keep up with the developed world. The things we have to see. Anyways, this is Susan reporting from Shell. See you next time. I hope with better news. Look at those greedy people. Hmm? This rigged system always the few rich who try to get more resources from the poor. We should never let such a capitalist run this world. It would be difficult, Mom. Look at this cloth. It is branded. It is capitalist. And where did you get this fruit? Another capitalist, right? Even now, I have to work and go for the capitalists. Okay, see you, Mom.